Hello, community. Are those two pictures similar? To what extent? How do we calculate similarity of two-dimensional images? Well, we transform the pixel array into a tensor, and if we have tensors, we can calculate the cosine similarity in vector space. And now here we go with our Jupyter Notebook, where I show you how to build here an image similarity system. If you want to follow along, here is the literature. You have a full Hugging Face blog here on this page. If you go here by Sayak Paul, published January 16, an excellent article about image similarity. And you have here, opening Colab, your Colab notebook. I just modified it a tiny little bit, so almost identical. Go download it and you can follow along. So we are building here an image similarity system with Hugging Face Transformers. And of course, we use vision transformers here. Now, at first, we have here a vision transformer database. And yeah, I suppose runtime are all in all. Yes, go. And we have here, we install our transformers. We install our data sets from Hugging Face. And then we say here, the model checkpoint that we use is exactly the model that I showed you in one of my last video, the VIT, the Vision Transformer Base Model, where we had this Google Vision Transformer Base Model with a patch size 16 times 16 and image size 224 times 224 pixels, which was trained by our famous 14 million uh, image set with 21,000 classes and it has been fine-tuned on the Beans data set. This is exactly where we left off in one of my last videos. And now, this is now where we start with this video. It's also uploaded here to Hugging Face. If you wanna have a look here, Hugging Face, Nature, Nate Raw, the Beans data set, here it is. And you have here the model card, and here are the files and the versions, everything. And it tells you this model is a fine-tuned model of Google's vision and fine-tuned on the Beans data set. This is exactly what we need. So we download this, beautiful. Now, next step is, of course, we have to load our data set of the Beans. So load data set Beans, beautiful, beautiful. In this data set, let's check one of the images, a sample image, how does it look like? Looks exactly like I showed you in my last video. We take the Beans data set because they are a free data set available to everybody. This data set has some features I showed you already. It has an image feature and it has a label feature. And it has three labels. Each picture is encoded in one of those three labels, angular leaf spot, bean rust, or a healthy plant. And we have, of course, a label to ID, which maps the label classes to integers, and the reverse one. Beautiful. Now, to be fast, we have now our query image that we encode and generate an embedding tensor. And of course, we say now the number of candidate samples that we want to compare it to, we limit to 100 images. Of course, please, if you're operational, you take the whole set of images that you want to compare your yellow query image to. But just for demonstration purposes, we limit ourselves to 100. Beautiful. Now, what you have to do, of course, you have to have a pre-processing. So we resize the image, the input image, to the same size like the system has been trained on when we take a center crop. We compute the embeddings now, and we map the embeddings extraction utility to our subset of candidate images of our 100 images. We had, we already had this. We create a list containing the identifiers of the candidate image. So we have a unique identifier. So we have the ID of the image and then we have an underscore and we have the label of the image. Beautiful, nothing special at all. Now let's put all these candidate image embeddings together in a huge matrix, in a huge tensor, if you want. So here we have all candidate embeddings now. And then, you are not going to believe it, we have now finally, we use the cosine similarity to compute the similarity score between every two images, between every two embedding vectors. And then we use it to fetch similar candidate samples from a given query sample. 
So here we now define the cosine similarity between every two vectors. Torch functional cosine similarity embedding one, embedding two. Beautiful. Fetch the similia. So we only take the top case similar images. Yes, yes, yes. We sort the result. Yes, yes, yes. Put this to the test. Yes, since this is just a function, as you can see, now we execute it here. We say, here we go. We want to have our similar images, the IDs and the labels. So we execute here this function on our 100 member test sample. And then we want to print the results. And as you see here, the query label was zero. From I showed you, we have three classes and our top five candidate classes, the top five most similar pictures, have an image classification label that corresponds absolutely with the query label. This is more or less exactly what we expected. But hey, let's have a visualization to show if this is really what we have. So here we have our query image and it has the label zero. Zero uh, corresponds to angular leaf spot. You see this little brown yellowish spot on the particular leaf. And then you have here in order, similar image one to similar image five, where they say, hey, this is the most similar image, second most similar image, third most similar image that we identified from your data set. As you see, we have now a working image similarity data set. Now, if you have not just hundreds and thousands of candidates, but you have millions and tens of millions of candidates, you have to come up with a quicker solution. This quicker solution um, has some hashing, some locality sensitive hashing. Uh, I leave you here the link, of course, in the description of this video. You see here, it is in detail, please. This is part of the download Jupyter Notebook. And if we look just at the result, and here now the visualization, you have here the label bean rust and the most similar images you see here in descending order. I think at the end, we do have here the label healthy, and you see here for healthy, candidates where the system tells you these are the most similar candidates for this particular image label. Here you have angular leaf spot, one, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. So yeah, you can pickle this, whatever. So there are a lot of options. And next time I want to show you how it is implemented in Keras in TensorFlow 2. There's a beautiful, very fast implementation if you want to implement this on your personal photo library, on your photo, on your sets of images you have taken or whatever images you have available. But this will be part of the next video. For the moment, I say thank you and I see you in my next video.